Hello and welcome to Unit 4 for Biology 2402 Lab, Cardiovascular Physiology. And we'll start off with the discussion of the pulse. So your pulse, you guys can all picture it and you can actually just see it right there. Um, your pulse is uh, able to be felt through the skin near major arteries that run fairly close to the surface. So that radial pulse there and then that carotid pulse are being shown. If you push lightly there, I think that the model is pushing a little hard, but if you push lightly just inside of the radius, you'll be able to feel that, that thump, thump. Now it's not, you're not actually feeling your heart beat. That's kind of a misconception. You're feeling an increase in pressure in that artery due to the heart having beaten uh, moments earlier. If you actually are really aware of your own body, you can hold there, sit there and uh, hold your finger on there and feel your heartbeat in your chest and there's a slight delay to that, uh, to the feeling of that pulse. Uh, <clears throat> now, I mentioned pressure. There's two measurements of, of blood pressure. There's actually a few more, but we'll just talk about systolic and diastolic. So systolic pressure is gonna be the larger number. It's the, uh, the uh, first number, right? So it's, it's the one that goes uh, 120 or 125 or 110 or whatever it is, uh, and that's, the blood, the pressure in the artery during ventricular systole. Systole is contraction. Diastolic pressure, the smaller number, uh, is when the ventricles are relaxed. So your blood pressure goes up and down and up and down. And you don't want it to be high, uh, you know, chronically high, because that's really hard on not only your heart, but also on your, your blood uh, vessels. Now, the, the unit of measurement is millimeters of mercury. Now, millimeters are a measurement of distance, and mercury is an element. So it's a weird combo. But when the person who invented this uh, blood pressure machine, the one on the left there really, uh, came up with it, he figured out that there was a, if you put a column of mercury, a very heavy liquid metal, in a little tube of a known diameter at a known elevation and temperature, there's a lot of requirements that go in there, that it will, be, it will exert a very predictable pressure on, the, uh, on whatever's measuring it. So the taller that mercury column gets, the more pressure it's putting on that on that cuff or on uh, on your arm, so you're you can measure that uh, pressure that way. I do a video to show you how to uh, measure blood pressure in the videos folder. It's not that great, but you know, go check it out. All right, let's talk about some of the sounds that you make or that your your body makes due to your your heart and blood vessels. Uh, first off, the sounds of Karotkov or Karotkov sounds uh, are named after the person who named some of them. Uh, these are the, measure, the, the sounds you hear as the cuff, the sphygmomanometer pressure decreases. So that sphygmomanometer, big mouthful of word there, uh, first squeezes your, your blood off, right? So when they, when they squeeze it really hard in, your, in the doctor's office, it's going to cut off the blood that, to get through. And as the blood pressure drops, you're going to start hearing a noise and you're going to start seeing a needle waver on that little dial. And that's, that's a measurement of your systolic pressure because at that point, your heart is strong enough to push the blood through, but then it stops. So as that cuff pressure keeps going down, you'll reach what's called uh, the diastolic pressure, which is the low end of it. And at that point, you're going to stop hearing the sound and the needle's going to stop wiggling. So those sounds are Karotkov sounds. Don't get those mixed up with the heart sounds. Uh, those are your lub dub. Those are the noises that you hear if you put the stethoscope on your chest. These two sounds, S1 and S2, you can call them lub and dub, or sometimes you'll see lub and dub, uh, are the sounds of valves closing. A lot of times students will say it's the sound of valves opening and closing. Nah, a, a, a well oiled door doesn't make noise when it opens, and your valves don't make noise when they open. So it's only when they shut. Uh, picture the, uh, the ventricles when they contract. So down here, when these guys pressure goes up, the blood, you want the blood to go out through these two tubes, right? You want them to go out through the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. You don't want the blood to go back up in here into these atria. So these valves shut, preventing the blood from going back into the atria. And that's when you hear the lub. The dub noise is due to back pressure in your uh, arteries. And when those ventricles relax, then the blood would tend to want to funnel back in here, but these uh, semilunar valves prevent that. Uh, lastly, a murmur 
is a, a valve noise that results from fluid flowing over it, your blood. Most, val most uh, murmurs are not dangerous, uh, but if they're severe enough, they can be uh, potentially harmful. And as you can see there, it is also the title of the first uh, REM album. And uh, when I was talking about heart sounds, I was going to talk about pet sounds, which is a Beach Boys album. But see, you learn a lot. All right, let's talk about some problems that hopefully you don't have. There's a list. I'm not going to name them all. Let's see what we want here. Hmm, da -da 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 -da. Um, ventricular fibrillation. Now, that's the one you always see on hospital movies when somebody's like, ah, you know, and then they get out the defibrillator. That's those electrical pads. What they're trying to do is they're going to try to, they literally shock your heart. And fibrillation is this quivering, shaky, gelatin-like movement of the heart, which isn't going to get any blood pumped. So when they zap you, it's going to depolarize all of the cells of your heart. And if they're all depolarized at the same time, then they're all going to repolarize at the same time. And you're going to have a nice little sequence there. Uh, hyper and hypotension, that's high and low blood pressure. The uh, chart doesn't have hypotension, so don't see chart. Uh, and there's some more interesting stuff about uh, murmurs. Uh, okay, there's an internal conduction system of your heart. And you can see those little yellow cables in this heart over here on the right. Those represent it. Now, the first node is called the sinoatrial node. And you can see that in the wall of the atrium, the right atrium. And that's your pacemaker. That's the one that's going to start the heartbeat. Uh, if you go for a run or you're scared, that heart rate's going to naturally elevate. And if you're calm or sleeping, it's going to naturally go down. But it'll set it at around somewhere around 60 to 75 beats per minute, depending on your physiological needs. At that point, that uh, sinoatrial node is going to send impulses all throughout these atria, which is going to cause the atria to contract. Now, don't get the electrical signal and the contraction confused. I'll show you that in the last figure here of this presentation. The electrical signal causes contraction. So the depolarization, repolarization, that whole action potential thing results in a mechanical event called uh, contraction. After the atria are stimulated, uh, this right here, this atrioventricular node or AV node gets the impulse and that's about a tenth of a second later. So you've got a slight delay. It's like, doo -doo, right? You're going to have this quick uh, follow up of the ventricles. That atrioventricular node sends the impulse down this cable, which then branches this, this cable right here is called the AV bundle right there. Uh, these are bundle branches, the left and right bundle branches. And then you've got these Purkinje fibers down here. You'll notice that these cables stay pretty intact all the way down and then they start to really branch out down here. So what you want is you want your heart to contract at the apex first, which is that tip, and squeeze the blood upwards just like you're supposed to do with a uh, tube of toothpaste, right? You start at the bottom and flatten as you go up. Once, that, uh, once those ventricles are stimulated, then they'll contract as well. Uh, <clears throat> where am I? I think I clicked this button. Oh, I see what I'm doing. Hold on. All right, cardiovascular phys physiology. So EKG and ECG, they're, they're the same thing. I always say EKG. That's how I learned it. It's from German, and you see how they got a lot of extra letters in there and some Ks. So either way, it's pronounced about the same. Uh, this is a – what the hell do I got going on over here? All right, nothing. Oh, clicking all kinds of stuff. All right, so this is a, a graphical representation of your – of the electrical activity of your heart. Um, there are some not notable features. I'm not going to go, and there's more than I've listed here. And uh, your book, you know, terminology is a little different on a couple of them, but let's see what I can do. So the P wave is the electrical signal that results from the atria depolarizing. So when those atria start that action potential, that's going to send a signal which you can measure and that's measured in voltage so you see a little bump there the qrs complex is the ventricles depolarizing so that's a much bigger signal a lot more muscle uh, you also notice that i've written that the atria uh, repolarize during this qrs but you don't notice that because it's a it's dwarfed by the 
by the by the QRS complex. Uh, T wave is when ventricles repolarize, and there's some more things. Um, let's see, mm, the PR or PQ interval. That's the same thing. It's a uh, in your book as two things, but they're the same. So I think PQ actually makes more sense uh, because it goes from the P, beginning of the P to the beginning of the Q. I don't know why they called it PR, but uh, this is kind of roughly equal to, it doesn't, it's not the delay, it isn't the actual delay between your atria and your ventricles contracting, but you could guesstimate the amount of time between atria and ventricles contracting by looking at that P. Uh, Q interval. The ST segment is that little segment after the ventricles uh, depolarize and before they repolarize. So this is kind of the amount of time that the ventricles spend completely depolarized. So completely depolarized uh, means that they are uh, in the midst of that uh, signal that's going to result in the contraction of the muscle. Uh, cardio pathologists can tell you a lot about your health based on these measurements. And then the QT interval is that long thing, that's the time of ventricular action potential, which would roughly mean that that's going to equal the time that the, the heart, be, the ventricles begin to contract till the time that they're completely relaxed. Now it's not the same, these aren't that, these, these signals aren't contraction, but you can use the, the time periods to kind of uh, Get an idea of when your heart's contracting. Now the last figure is a jawbreaker. So now it looks scary, okay? Don't be scared. I want you to look at the uh, look at the different um, rows we have here. So at the top we've got this uh, electrocardiogram. So you see that ECG signal, which we're familiar with now. This uh, middle bit right here, this bit is going to measure pressure in various different chambers and vessels. So if you look at this red line right here, like way up here, that's the left ventricle. So if you look at the uh, the P wave right here, I said that the P wave is atrial depolarization and I said that it results in atrial contraction. So if you look at that P wave and you look down here at left atrial pressure, let me erase. So you look down here at left atrial pressure, which is the blue line, it's after, on the time line, uh, after the, the P wave. I'm going to pause and come back. All right, so I just paused the, the recording for a second. So I think I was talking about how the, the atrium, atrial pressure goes up just after you see that, uh, that P wave. Then we'll look at the QRS complex and notice that basically right in the middle of it, the uh, ventricular pressure starts to go up. So the electrical signals are causing those mechanical events. Notice also that, interestingly, as that, aor that ventricular pressure goes up, it when it equals the aortic pressure, the pressure in the aorta, then the aorta pressure goes up. So that's because they're now continuous blood flow. When the ventricle, ventricular pressure gets strong enough to open up the semilunar valves, then the uh, blood in the aorta and the blood in the ventricle are basically the same blood, so they have the same pressure. Uh, over the top here, the ventricle's running out of blood, so the pressure starts to go down a little bit. It's still contracting, but as the pressure goes down, then you're going to have the aorta basically plane off here and kind of like decrease slowly, and that's that's because the semilunar valves close right here, and you get a little spasm, and that's called that dichrotic notch. Then the uh, the artery itself is gonna, you know, you see the pressure going down and down and down. Not too far, right? It's gonna go, all right, I apologize for the unprofessionalness here. It's kind of a shock to you guys, but I had to go chase a cat around the house because it was meowing. All right, so that uh, pressure of the aorta, you'll notice that it's at its high, at its high point, it's about 120 millimeters of mercury, and at its low point, it's at about 80. So that's the 120 over over 80. In other news, here's those heart sounds. So this is the lub noise, and that lub is when the ventricles contract, the AV valves close. Sound two dub, and that's right there. See the semilunar valves closing, and then you can hear it. 
Uh, at the bottom, this volume uh, row is somewhat interesting, but as I mentioned, uh, at right at the beginning of ventricular contraction, you've got the most volume in those ventricles. As the heart contracts, it'll squeeze the blood out, and then it'll slowly refill over time with the atria topping it off, right? And repeat. You can also see systole ventricular, or sorry, atrial systole, ventricular systole, and then uh, ventricular diastole, and so on. So this this whole column really lines, this whole table really lines up nicely, sort of in a vertical uh, vertical sense, with with time being the constant along the x-axis. Anyway, that's uh, that's all I got. So hopefully that was of some use to you. Watch the short video on blood pressure measurement and uh, check out the photos. Sorry this was such a long one. And see you later.